Okay. Okay. So, I'd like to call to order the uh, North Bend Planning Commission meeting on May 3rd, 2023 at 6.31. And we'll start with the commissioner roll call. Brian? Present. James? Present. Olivia? Present. Juliana? Present. Kent? Yep, present. Susan? Present. And... Earl, is he online? He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Yeah, he's on oh, he's on his way. way. All right. So we do have a quorum. Whatever. <clears throat> All right. Um, do we have someone online? We do. Um, I'd like to open up a public comment for <clears throat> non agenda items. At this time, we'd like to consider comments from the general public regarding non agenda items. As a reminder, there will be no dialogue between commissioners and the public. The commissioners are listening and considering your comments. Um, to start off, we would need to get to know your name and address, and then we'll have three minutes. Is there anyone who would like to speak on non-agenda item comments? Is the person online interested? All right. We will open and close the non-agenda item comment session at 6.30. All right, um, agenda item number three, we're going to review the planning commission meeting minutes from April 19th. Um, have the planning commissioners had a chance to take a look at it? If you have, are there any corrections or changes? Now is the time to share. And... Nice to meet you. All right, um, maybe I'd like to make a motion to pass. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the April 19th commission meeting. Is there a second? No, maybe a second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, it passes. All right, our fourth agenda item is the housing action plan. First, we'll have staff and Blue Run uh, talk about it. After that, we'll have a public hearing if there's anyone who would like to share from the public, and then we'll do deliberation and recommendation. Um, so, staff? Sure. Sounds good. Um, Kaylee, you want to know? Hi, uh, <laughs> my name is Caitlin Pepper. I'm accompanied by Sarah Schossel, and we are the city's consultants from Blue Line, based in Kirkland. Um, we're here to request your review and hopefully recommendation of the housing action plan, which is a document that does not have any regulatory impact on the city. It is a menu of potential options for the city to explore, consider, and evaluate for um, appropriateness in um, planning for housing for the future um, and for every income level. Um, I had it to you. I tried to get it out to you early um, with a final draft, with a, not a final draft. So busy pictures that we're updating, but the text, final draft of the text um, in the packet. Um, we are on a bit of a time crunch based on the grant, so we do need a recommendation today, even if your recommendation includes changes or additional work that needs to be done in the future. We do need to get a recommendation to council so we get it on their agenda. Okay. So we do have a public hearing um, yeah. announced, so we could go ahead and open the public hearing and then close it and then this can go on. All right. Uh, we will. It is 6.35 p.m. We will open the public hearing at this time to consider comments from the public regarding the uh, proposed housing action plan. And as a reminder, there will be no dialogue between the commissioners and the public. The commissioners are listening and considering comments. Is there anyone, there's no one in the room, but is there anyone online that's interested in sharing comments? Okay. Uh, it appears that we don't have any public comments. So we'll go ahead and close the public hearing at 636. Um, and now would be an opportunity for us to deliberate, ask questions about the housing. This is a a lengthy, lengthy yeah. document. I mean, the first one I heard out was like well, it, it, over 100 pages. I mean, it includes the housing needs assessment that you guys already saw. So there's pieces in there that you 
Yeah, so okay. you just you don't know that until you come across it. The, yeah. the uh, also, I went online because I didn't get the adjunct. Yeah, I'm double side. This is double side. <laughs> um, and the um, I didn't receive an email with whatever is posted up on the website at the city because I didn't have the agenda in whatever I was sent, so I just went and got it off of the website. And then when I looked in there at that document, mean, that was 245 pages. So I was like, whoa. I was like, what got added? So it looks like there's duplication on what's up on the website. Um, like it's it's in um, portrait mode and then mm -hmm. there's a landscape mode. And then and then mm -hmm. there's like kind of like just this sort of like blue line doesn't have all the extra prettiness on it. And so I think there was duplication of, of information that was in that. So it was like I'm reading this online, mm -hmm. but then there was like additional stuff in the second one. So, <laughs> anyways, attached to your agenda is that hat binder, and that's um, that should be the one that's online as well. Yeah, the one I read was like 178 pages. Yeah, the agenda is 243. Yeah, so both the minutes, you know. Right. So that was the one that I saw on the website. I didn't get an additional, I don't think I got the email that had the, the agenda. In it. I only got the one you gave a draft like early before. So I'm not sure if my, my email got. I think it was sent on the 24th of like last Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And always, if you're not. Thursday is the one where we send it out and attach it to your calendar, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for some reason I couldn't find it. So you I didn't see it in your calendar? No. no. So. Mm -hmm. And that might have been the last meeting too. So that's that's for another time. Oh, to yeah, that. yeah. Let's look at that. Um, because you should be able to go into your calendar to open your calendar, and then it should be attached to it. You yeah. know. Also, but obviously, you can go to the city website under. Yeah, that's what that's for. <laughs> yeah. So. so anyway, so it is very lengthy. Um, I did have some questions, but I will I'll go to the floor. Yes, ask some questions first. I just have some math questions. Yeah, me too. Let's see you the same. Okay. Question, right? So when you read the gross target evaluation, sorry, I don't have any page numbers to reference because there were any page numbers on it. So I will be trying to be as clear as possible. The growth target evaluation section, which is on two summary of public engagement. Down to yeah, the yeah. regulatory As review for target evaluation. Yes, that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it says that. Fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To meet our twenty forty four goal for housing units, we're gonna add fifty five housing units per year. That's when I did the math from here. 55 units, it's 1,155 units. But then I have read that here under summary of finding housing needs assessment, that our goal is 1,748 units. So are we saying we have 593 in the works right now? Is that what we're Sorry. <laughs> I can do it this again. Um, so it says, to meet the growth target, the city will add about 55 mm -hmm. students. Yes. So 55 at 21 is 1,155. I did the same thing, but I did it for 20 years. I divided it by 20 years and I got 87.4 each year instead of 55. So yeah, I got like 89. Oh, um, well, if but I think it is counting the pipeline, but it's a matter of what. Yeah, what do we have to do consider 23? This text goes to the comprehensive plan. I think it's uh, the date is like by the end of the year, right? So it starts to value like uh, 2024. So, yeah, so 20, 20 years. years. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. So 20 times 55 is 1,100 units. But then here it says that our goal is 1748. So 1748 is the correct number. So 1748 divided by 20 is 87.4 units a year, not 55. Unless I'm so the 1748 is the total number from King County Building Works Report, which was this year 2018. So they spent three years of building since then, okay. which could account for some of the 3 And additionally, I believe we did account for pipeline. 
months mm -hmm. when looking at past 2022. Okay. So does it give any context? Is that number of no, it's not it's in the it's in the like introduction area. Okay. Like on the first page. Um <laughs> almost like we were down to part two of the first page. First section. Yes, part yeah. two. Yeah. Second page of part two. Yeah, yeah that was one of my questions too. Is part two? Oh, okay. That's the first reference. It's also in part three, start to the A, start to A, first paragraph. And then part three. Well, the 1740 is the correct. So it's the 58. It's the 55. That's the question. 1748. Yeah. But 748, is that from 2019? Or is that from now? Yeah, 2020. 2020. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this. Can you use like data from 2019, correct? It's a report that the county took experts that we contribute data to. So. It's our assigned number from the county. So 1840 is our assigned number. We've accepted it. That's our number. Okay. <laughs> so 1748 by 2044. Yes. And so somehow you need to mention that the fact that it's from two. And then so the so the math matches, because everybody's gonna have this question. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna yeah. want to divide it and go, okay, it doesn't match up. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially because it said the housing identified in the 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. Specific methodology. Um, so, in kind of old land was issued in 2021 around the American Community Survey numbers. Yeah. So, the data they were using was from 2019. So, we have to add to that the 1748 goal, the 2019, or rather the 2018 CS number, which gives North Bend. I, in my head, the big number I use is 2044, sorry, because that's the horizon that we're using, uh, 4,365. And then whatever year it is right now, and how many housing units are in North Bend, subtract it, get the number. Does that, does that help? Like, that help? Where are you getting the 4,000? Current, the, oh, the number of the time right. of units plus 1,700. Yes. <clears throat> But isn't it 1740 new? New, yes. right? 2019. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. growth is hard. Right. So by 2040. Yeah. So yeah. you clarify the point is to just mention that there are 590, whatever that number is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. From the. And then some of the paragraph will clarify that issue. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Helpful to have a graphical element to help. Yeah. Kind of explain that, and we can definitely have our in design graphic and designer person do that when she puts together the PDF version. I still have a hard time finding 55. Like, I've done the map a few different ways, and I just can't get the number 55. We can revisit it. It's yeah, so it's 748 minus 593 divided by 21 years left, and I get two exactly. Okay, thank you. Minus one? Uh, minus 593. Oh, okay. 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 Still 69. Okay, got it. And then, oh, sorry, one more math question. I'm sure there's other, but one other that I was looking at was um, under the target growth evaluation here, it said that from 2010 to 2022, he grew an average of 67 units per year. But then, when I read on to strategy B meeting housing need, it said that in 2008 to 2022, 14 years, we had 1,246 units, and that's 89 units per year. 
So at least two of those years mentioned in this paragraph are incorrect. Right. Like, well, working. they're coming from different years. I mean, they include some of the same years, but it's also a different year. But you can't say that from 2010 to 2022 by 67, and then in this page, say that from 2008 to 2022, <coughs> we grew by 89. Because double. Yeah, it is an average. It's an average per year with the total of housing <coughs> units that are developed within those years. But so 2008, 2009, and then Oh, it would be the other way. It would be from 20, what, 2016 okay. to now, oh. or 2016 to 22 is a more dense growth. Mm -hmm. It would bump sure. your average up a little bit. But it's just saying it's a little more average. It does look like a document. It should be a little bit more consistent. Yeah. It shouldn't overlap those two years. You can't okay. remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to urge us about that. Okay, well, how about we streamline yeah. the second okay. mention of it and just leave it between 2010 and 2022 just to reduce some confusion? Mm -hmm. yes. That's perfect. Yeah. And you said that was under strategy B? Um, yeah, leaving housing. Yeah. Comparing strategy B to the paragraph that we previously yeah. similarly talked about. So we'll go from 2010 to 2020, and then you guys will. I, I do like that you guys gave like how many units there were in both of those years. So if you guys could mention in 2010 how many games there were, and just take out the whole 2008. I mean, you can you can leave it there if you want to take it out. That's the other part. I thought it was. Yeah, please. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, so now the page will be like that. Yeah, I'm going to be able to get it. Yeah, I think, are you part of the original one we emailed you or the packet? I'm in the one that. Oh, the video. Yeah, that's the oldest one. You need to pull the packet one out of your catalog. That's what I was asking. Are you in the packet or are you in the. That was just text, and this one had everything attached. Yes. Probably tweaks that page. Mm -hmm. That's the term. That'd be good. Should match. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's anything else. Three, that was it. So not not for math. I like how much. Yeah, this is different than mine. I showed two of these pages. For the packet? Or you just combine them. I combine them on the one I upload. Yeah, this is the only video. Yeah. This is. Marks? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mentioned like eight times. The <laughs> actual strategy. Yeah. 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 Meeting housing needs. Yeah. 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 So, does that make sense what I'm saying? What you're saying is it's the previous one said what? From 2008 to 2010 to 22, right? Yeah. 67 units. From 2010 to 22. Oh, so, so you're saying if you subtract the difference and you divide it by year, that's a much higher average. 89. Than, than 89 per year versus the other one that says it was only 57. 67, yeah. 67. And there's more years, so the number should be averaged further out, and technically. <clears throat> it depends on how many were in 2008. You know, that's what I was saying. Yeah. It depends on how many years in 2008. Other well, 2009, 2010. 
Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, 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 <laughs> That's a really light the talk of diversity in housing because while we absolutely want to be able to low income housing, I think that we also want high end housing too. Um, I have no problems with the numbers that that have been put in, but our footprint is small, so. I think that we'll have to be very careful in our zoning and and urgent our plan as to where the housing can go. It has to be in the right place and the community and all that. And so that's where I'm really looking at this is I'm fine with the numbers. I mean, I I'm fine with huge numbers, but it has to be in the proper location and the proper way so that the entire city doesn't go multifamily. Um, I have no problem with multi-family, but it just has to be in the right place. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Part two, summary of findings. Um, I've been marking with this land capacity to accommodate 869 units, and many of those are rentals. But do you know what the formula is? How many rentals and how many are home books? Like, what is even 869? Like, what does that even like? What is that number? Because all the other numbers are just like, what is that? Number? I don't understand that number at all. That number, okay, if I'm recalling correctly, that number is that number is the discrepancy between the current zone capacity. So, if North Bend using its current zone consideration is like fully built out, there that's an amount of housing, and then there's a housing target that the county's issue. Discrepancy between the two of those is 890 units. And the county wants them, so that's like the ratio. Of the so you're that's saying that's like how many you have to get to the zone for. So you're saying that if we didn't rezone anything, we could not make our goal of 1748. What was the housing that we accepted? So. I think that's really referring to the oh, no. Yeah, we need lower income housing needs because the city has an overabundance of moderate and above median income housing, but there is a deficit of low income, very low income, extremely low income housing, which is typically fulfilled by rental units because people that are very low income are much less likely to qualify for a mortgage or a loan mm -hmm. on a home. So that's what that means. Yeah, I think I think that section just reads weird because it's saying eight hundred sixty nine units, which then you go into must be the renters reasonable amounts, blah blah blah. But it doesn't read that way right off the bat. Yeah, so we can add more prescriptive language describing why it's most likely going to have to be rental housing and where that number is coming from. We don't. City doesn't designate whether housing is rental or. Not we don't think the density. Right. And we're not saying that you have to regulate it, but we are saying that you need to at least accommodate the space within your capacity and in your code to allow that to happen to meet those other income level needs. It doesn't right. have to be rental housing, but it should be rewritten to say most likely it needs to be rental housing. What so what's the Impact of so you've mentioned land use study and infrastructure study. What if the infrastructure can't sustain that? Why does it take it? <laughs> well, the infrastructure you do because if transit plan, you, the comp plan includes infrastructure to show that it meets the same targets. Or so, like, what I guess, I guess, is to, to say it another way, at like what level of fulfillment of those plans does the city have to be to be compliant? Like, at some point, you have the plan, but in reality, there's mm -hmm. no, but 
system. Yes, the plan and the And it's our 20 year plan. You know, it's not like it has to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think it's the idea. And we're talking about this, right? There's there's no consequences for not giving to these numbers if you have a concrete for uh, true. Yeah. So mm -hmm. but it's also like there are that just makes it sound like we're always here. We want to aspire. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 The point is though, well, and to be clear, this this number is based on the buildable housing. Report correct that was done in 2019. Yeah. We've approved form based code which has maximum dwelling units. We might have that number may be much lower, but we have to hire a consultant as we prepare our housing audit to look at our current zoning and current requirements, not what was in 2019, which is what this is based off of. I, I think we missed a lot of the wrong, but I think this whole thing is a lot better. We just have to show that we're not trying to. Right. Everybody has to take their fair share of the GMA. And so the point of a lot of this is just saying we're not making everything single family so that we don't have people moving in. Right? That's so the, the numbers, while are important to know what the numbers are. But that's why you know, I'm those numbers. Right? That's where my question came with the infrastructure to Anna's point. Like, okay, so you want, you're, you're okay with density, but in the right spot, yeah. you put it on one at a time, you can't get it there without your sure. bar. Is that compliant or like? Well, that's where the compliant has to be compliant together. Yes. This this is. I guess this is, what yeah. this is that infrastructure stuff we have to say in order for this to make sense at all, or could it like no like? Trust that review. I think our infrastructure <laughs> plans have to be have to accommodate the twenty years if, too. If we change our zoning in some areas, we may have to go back, like we said, and adjust our transit element. Because if we needed higher density, it didn't take that into account. It has to read. Yeah, like, but I guess what I'm saying is it's like chicken and the egg, right? It's like it if, we, if we rezone, mm -hmm. part of what we rezone, we should know like what's reality on the infrastructure and transit. Mm -hmm. And then if you know, if you're going to extend transit or something, are you going to have neighborhoods who have never had transit? Like, how does that impact like the roads and the roads that we have? Sure. Mm -hmm. I think it, um, if we if we start adopting missing middle and take into account walkability for missing middle so people don't have to have a car they can walk to the grocery store potentially they can walk to their own place um, and increase units that way one bedrooms or something like that or um that that might address that and, and have less of an impact on the transportation mm -hmm. so well thought out and yeah, if we can get more transit in the future right um, which definitely seems to be Kind of a, um, a pattern I'm seeing in kind of this housing discussion is, you know, that access to transportation is important for a lot of the people that need the housing here too. Right. Yeah. I'm hearing that. So. <clears throat> but Caroline, I agree. I think um, it is a chicken and egg situation. Um, I know water was one of the biggest issues we might have solved out in the document from the, the survey. Like, Residents assume, and maybe it's correct, maybe it's not like we don't have enough water to support the current city. And so, how can we plan all this future housing and make all these plans when we don't have the water? Like, you know, there's all of these things that are kind of like, you know, maybe back up on another. Um, but to your point, I do agree, it is a focus on housing and all that, all those pieces will be brought together at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's just the requirement is with the housing being done, they don't care about the water issues. Yeah, it it says, but it get the, the housing. Yeah, but it does seem to be addressed. So it's addressed it's in the facility of the right. complex. Yeah. yeah, it's addressed later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, can I bring up something that I thought was kind of missing from this? Um, so there's a lot of focus on the downtown sub area plan and you know infill in the downtown area, which sure once you season like it, it's great for people to walk to place that need to go. Um, and then there's incentives for um, you know, developers come in and um, do the what it's called the residential tax um, exemption. Um, yeah, down to you know support more multifamily uh, developments. But if you look at the city of North Bend, uh, there are a lot of properties that have very large lots, and they're individual owners. And right now, like I just experienced, I'll, I'll share my story. I'm just like, for me, but I just experienced. Um, um, you know, came into the city. I actually met um, mm -hmm. some people. 
Um, and we have a different path and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. still, but like if we were to build, uh, there's so much fees like associated, like, you know, we have to be on sewer now. We have to um, have a sidewalk and a, a, a trench and light posts and all these things that are kind of written in the code. But then all of a sudden it makes like affordability to build so impossible. Like you kind of are stuck building a really, really rich- To make it affordable it has to be sub subsidized. Yeah, so I'm wondering like in these other areas, like that have big properties, um, like that maybe want to sell out part of it or you know split it and uh, do a, a bunch of little grand uh, sales. Like, are there going to be? Is that going to be something that is going to be incentivized? Like, um, and how do you confirm it is going to be like a affordable or attainable? You can only incentivize it if you keep restricted it affordable. That's the only way to guarantee okay. it's affordable. So if there was a program. To support that, then so then all these would be not necessarily waived but reduced or if that's something that's yeah. wanted to, but I go back to the program thing, right? Because there's a large law that's in the city limits is a law, mm -hmm. you underwrite that at $27,000 bid versus 8000 in the city, it just doesn't depend mm -hmm. like the from the developer's hand. either that or it depends on it, but it ain't gonna be affordable, so yeah, that extra cost is going to yeah, and it's one thing that if you can get a lot that you can build 300 homes on, yeah, sure, you can figure out a way to recoup those costs. But if you're a single family homeowner and you have a lot that you want to split or you want to split it in four ways, it becomes it still is like a, a big yeah. challenge. So, the way it's to go ADU, so those these are so you only have one, like let's say you have a, like a three acre property starting in a year, you'll be accepted. Okay, but just like, <laughs> you know, there's three acre property that you could do short plots, for, yeah, like you know, yeah, seven yeah. short plots, yeah. but um. But then you can't build an EU on a separate short plot. Like it has to be. Mm -hmm. it, like so, how does that? How I don't know. I feel like there's a missing piece of like how do we um, encourage residents to think about building and supporting uh, community growth in the right way? Because I think people have shared in many surveys, many public commentary. Um, they don't like seeing big developments, but maybe it's mm -hmm. like you know. I mean, to, to to build at an affordable level, it's about changing the the zone. Yeah. If you want to build. And make it affordable, it's not single family because that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do with a short plot, there's going to be single family homes that are going to be out, outside the attainable scale. So you need to change this up to something like this, and then allow eight units that are look like duplexes or cottage homes or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that those costs, like you said, get grouped. There's less costs related to subdividing and things like that when you do that. So do we have like the areas in North Bend that um, like you're like spelled out on a map that will show like, you know, these areas will be rezoned for multifamily. Have we looked at that? No, that's, okay. Next. That's, yes, okay. next. Not quite next, but yeah, the plan yeah. is here. So long. Nope. Let's still need it. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting challenge. Well, since we still need to do the analysis, we don't know. Like we just talked about that number. We don't know what that number is based on our current zoning and things we've made since 2019. So that's what we have to look at. And then strategy 8.2.2 does recommend revisiting the city's impact fees to see if there's any opportunities to create more flexibilities and more yeah. opportunities. And that's, I think that's, that's, I mean, impact fees are, are what they are, and I think that's a good thing, but it's also like, uh, you yeah. know, look at all these sprawling neighborhoods um, that are accepted, like, is it realistic to really make a new development connect to sewer that might be thousands of feet away from the sewer? I see. Point? Like, mm -hmm. is that like the right part? Mm -hmm. Is that the right thing to do? Like, or working like, but there were eight more so, homes with seven. I don't know much on this, and you might know it, but there was like, uh, when that serious all purpose field went in, like, there was a whole that whole super discussion, right? And did that developer offer, uh, like to help subsidize that sewer scenario for a multifamily? Never mind, and I don't know. Well, they're as part of their phase two development, which includes the building, they oh, yeah. they were required to um, bring the force main out. Now there has been a ULID formed, um, and so everybody will be contributing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the city has never taken the approach to force a sewer connection. You um, just can't subdivide. Yeah. Yeah. It just. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because I don't. You can build on an existing one. You just can't subdivide, right? Yeah. With a subject. Mm -hmm. If you have an existing one. Yeah. So. I just. I mean, I don't even know how much this city is on sewer, but I feel like my neighborhood is on septic. Um, and I know like Silver Creek. Silver Creek. Silver Creek is on sewer. Yeah. Right? That is on septic as well. Those are the two big areas. Okay. Um, and the rest on sewer. Mostly. I mean, I, I could get, well, with the Meadowbrook not either right now, I, my guess yeah, would be yeah, like, for, yeah, Meadowbrook, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good story. story. Okay. My guess would be maybe 70%. Oh, okay, that's how you say it. Yeah. They came through beautifully, you said. But you didn't have to look, there's a river on my house, but I'm still on septic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and she yeah. has a trigger to force her to yeah. connect. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's not stable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I paid the fee for me to buy, I paid my like $20,000, mm -hmm. and it's 15 of them. So, yeah, just. Is there sewer connect going towards Nintendo now? That's part of the you and the Metro yeah. 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 It includes that area, yeah. as well yeah. as by the ball fields and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's really expensive to develop, as you know. Yeah. I mean, the best thing is to do you, but get all of your neighbors together and pay for the sewers so that everyone pays their equal fair share for future development possibilities. And yeah. Then, you, you know. I don't, the cheapest I don't way to do it, because then one person yeah. trying to bring it all the way to one lot is is not yeah. feasible. I mean, it's, it's got me thinking, like, meeting with, um, the, the team here, like it's, it is just very, it is very expensive. And unless you have a partnership with people that are willing to um, get creative, uh, it can be very challenging. And that, that forces big developers to come in and make giant communities that people are very, you know, yeah, and, and against. It's, it's, it's a balance, a little bit of a monopoly work too, right? Cause like, I totally agree with you about the impact being on how you incentivize sort of our neighbors to do more growth. But, you know, in my opinion, to do that from a development standpoint, you can lower those fees, which are money from the city, right? If you invest in commercial infrastructure that you're now you get businesses to come in and mm -hmm. sort of backfill the money that you were passing off now. Mm -hmm. So you don't charge sort of your citizen doing your backyard. Yeah. Left. But which is why we try and concentrate on the downtown and go along with that makes you so they look like so as we talk about the zoning later in here, that would be the only thing I want to be cognizant of is doing more of the residential rezone, but we're not going to touch too much of the commercial or has that been discussed? Um, well, it has been discussed. It all needs to come back. I don't want to <laughs> say anything else. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But for this group to be talking about, like, a massive rezone and commercial, I think would have long-term financial impacts to us in the town, which is from this way. Yeah. So my one other question about the downtown area was um like the infill, like where is since so there's gonna be a big focus on a sub-area plan for the downtown corridor, like where 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 do you fill? because uh, I think it's like the people's backyards thing, like that I was just talking about, like it's a big property. Like when I look at like a Google Earth, like there's not a lot of space to fill in its people's backyards, which would mean you would um, you know, would help, but where where is that infill expected to, to be? Some of the single family property you know, like in our downtown, it would be commercial on the ground and hopefully get into a spot. So they could sell to it. Okay, I see what you But anything would count. I mean, your proposal would count too as an infill. Yes. Yeah, you got. Mm -hmm. And then what about, like, you know, in the, the downtown area where all those apartments are? Mm -hmm. I don't know how big their lots are, but maybe there's more space around them to build. Some more units there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, you know what senior awesome. center is? Then there's all those mm -hmm. there's all those apartments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um there's a lot. Is there room there to add as an interest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's like multiple apartments around. Isn't there a chunk though on that? Right behind it where that one hotel is gonna be on the Yes, that's a residential proposal, a mixed use proposal. For the hotel by the gateway? Mm -hmm. And is that zone commercial right now? It's uh, interchange mixed use, which allows commercial and residential. Is that big concrete? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I will finish my, my Instagram page uh, by <laughs> saying that I thought this was very good. I do think there's a lot of really good points in here. I think um, obviously some numbers can be fixed and some things need to be addressed, but I think it's a really good and strong starting point to have a conversation for uh, students across the board.
Um, and I would love to see it the um, what's it called the Elven Mall. Mm -hmm. Whatever we do there. Um, any thoughts on any more comments? So, I was just looking at the public outreach summary on page seven. Um, I'm just curious. So, you go through following housing types. Um, have you seen this in the survey? It's a large portion of single family homes and then the age range. And I realize that, you know, the people taking the survey are adults, but there's no list of um, children in it. And the only reason I bring that up is because that does make a difference on housing. Um, so I mean, this is, this was a survey, so it's not really something you can change, but I, I think that's kind of interesting that that's not addressed as um, kids are actually in the housing as well. Because a single family home with kids is different than a single family home with an individual person or a couple of individual people. Um, you know, it, it does affect the community in a different way. But those are in the census. We don't need a survey. Sure, but it's just, household, but I'm, I'm bringing it up because it's part of the document. Right. You know, is, uh, is that somewhere in here? I thought I saw that somewhere. Yeah, in North end population, where it showed like we have single people, we have a family, we have oh co living. I thought I saw that somewhere. We talked about that. Yeah. And then I'm curious too. Does the city um, have a minimum unit size? For for multi-family or single family for whatever is there a minimum? So it can be as small as you want it, as long as it's okay with building code. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah, yeah. I heard this mm -hmm. um this thing on the radio the other day saying Seattle and surrounding Seattle has the smallest apartments, mm -hmm. like per people living in per square foot or whatever, in the entire nation. Which mm. is pretty amazing that like our mm. housing is the smallest. Mm. Well, that's, I'm not sure if they were counting New York State or if they're counting mm. Manhattan. That would make a big difference. Yes, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> you see all New York City. Yeah, I would think that New York City would be higher in how small, small it is. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's hmm. historically, anyways. But but I did think that that was interesting that the Seattle area. Across the board, and then we need to look up the exact, you know, yeah, we don't have a minimum, minimum square footage, <laughs> no, but we have a lot area, and then we have some other parameters, right? Yeah, yeah, that are gonna, you know, because it's of the cost of land, land it's not, yeah. not financially usable to build a small unit, right? It's true, but I think it is something that we should consider. In, you know, obviously we wouldn't want it to be affordable, but the market drives a lot of the affordability anyways. I mean, remember we don't have any control over whatsoever. We can build all day long, but at the end of the day, the market the yeah. market's what sells. So somebody downtown wants to do as a small existing home and then because of the form based code, they they have to replace it with multi units. So they're gonna do two little micro units mm -hmm. um, and then their main unit. So that'd be three living one home converted. And rebuilt into three units, three units, yeah. So, which might be fine, but I think that we might want to, as we go down this road, we might want to look at what is a comfortable mm -hmm. living situation. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a there's a max. I mean, building code has what a bedroom size has to be, like mm -hmm. so a bedroom has a specific square footage. It so, does. Yeah, there can be very small bedrooms, and if you have a family living in a very small unit, just you know, quality of life. Eighty use of a max. It's going to be a thousand. Oh, they would want a thousand this year as well. Again, probably about a year and a half okay. before. When we're done with the comp plan, then we have to comply within six months with the new law. As ours going to be is the law preventing us from the two eighty use on our property. Okay. 
Um, Sorry, there's so many different legislations. Yeah, when they going to affect? <clears throat> you know, one that's still going to affect before we get to our five year. Mm -hmm. Get another one that's longer. Yeah. Oh, 20. Yes. Can you provide me a residential median zoning? What, um, how many units could be for that? For what? Uh, residential medium. We don't have a. Oh, okay. And so B. B point, uh, you guys made a recommendation for a medium that's near residential to talk to the other side and work on it. It's considered changing the cars residential zone to a residential medium. Yes, yeah, you guys reviewed a code and recommended that that never got adopted by council. This is kind of recommending it continue forward and get adopted because we currently have a cottage. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And that's, so instead of having cottage, it would allow other 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 It didn't actually change the density of drive-lots in between cottage, just new yeah. land use types. So that would be further defined with the zoning and everything. Yeah, it's it's kind of a broad statement now. To so that would allow a single, current single family? A current cottage. Current cottage yeah. residential. Oh, yeah. To allow two types of drive with four fourplexes, not just cottage. Okay. 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 And then is missing middle an official zone yet? Yeah. 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 No, that's not another one. It's actually a list of all it's the similar zones. Again, medium and zero is dead on. It just depends on what land use is allowed. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one question on the permitting process for um, ADUs and account for what else, but um, the topic of streamlining processes um, you know, like, is that defined anywhere, or is that kind of Step. There are some streamlines and again new legislation discussion. So specifically for ADUs. For all processing. Okay. And so it allows the city to adopt additional. Okay. Um, what is like, what is that actually? How many days it takes to process? The design review. Um, some cities have done the pre um pre-approved plans even for kind of mixed reviews on that. Um some cities have like those bars have a design review board. We don't have that. Yeah. We've, we've got ours pretty streamlined already. We don't, an ADU can generally just go into the building department mm -hmm. and we review it. It doesn't require a separate, you know, okay. land use application. So we're pretty good at streamlining, but we could look at what else we can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take one more each So B2. Point two, where it says permit a wider variety of housing development and residential zones surrounding North Bend Way. Um, and it says the city should investigate allowing more residential uses in the low density residential or unit per acre zone within one third mile of North Bend Way. These zoning areas will alleviate pressure on the North Bend housing market while maintaining the town's character. I have to say, I have to disagree with that. Because people have been saying over and over again that they don't want to see stacks of housing mm -hmm. right under Mount Side. What page do you want to do? Uh, I don't want to page. It's page 25. 2.2. Page 25. So, yeah. my clarifying question is what is a uh, zone within one third mile of North Bedway? So, like, just out, like, we're talking about increasing the density, which would mean going up. And people have told us time and time again that this is not, they don't want to see giant towers of multi family residential housing right there on North Bend Way. So, sure, maybe, no, not even because you can literally see not even last mile. Our, our height limit is a proposed change. That, that's, that's still 35. Um, Additionally, I mean, this doesn't really tell us we need to change it. Anything, right? It's just kind of saying that hey, we should be able to increase the density. And then when we talk about, oh, hey, how should we do this in five years? It's going to be when we really should go up. And so, what I'm saying is that this sentence is not accurate of what everybody is saying to come. Well, I think that currently it's it's all zone uh, low residential, right? Single family along North Bend Way. And I think what they're trying to say here, which are um, to allow you to have more missing middle duplexes, triplexes, 
you know, instead of just having one house there that you have like one big house, but it's got four units in it. So not necessarily. Yeah, no, and I do, and I and I can definitely interest it that way. I just feel like a lot of the conversation that we have about increasing density of residential rights, all of it, it always ends up with going up. And it's it's a constant. Yeah, six big houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. 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 And how we can increase the density and how we can increase the density. The way it's increased is having all those different units. Yeah. Well, That's why you're increasing the density. Like, you're taking up more of the space of the land and you're making new zoning laws. Smaller, <laughs> smaller units. Smaller yeah. units, any size, more. But it's that requires that you having ownership of a bigger. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Actually, so you look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that has, 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 has pictures of how they have done it. Yeah, it's definitely cool. Because currently, our code allows you to design a single family within one place. That's yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, and they don't want like a, a third mile around the DC zone. So we have two conversations. Yeah. Okay. Do you have I think I need to see what's the the right? Or dark for the height. No, 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 and you said not change commercial, but I think we need to look at our industrial zones on our bedway and maybe look at neighbor business with a lot of residential on top of commercial. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that maybe that's where we were also going with this is look at all single family up again. There should be no single family up against our bedway. It should either be multifamily or business mixed with, with or mixed use. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where the one third mile puts you out compared to the properties that line um north end way mm -hmm. um you can provide a graphic of that for city council yeah i think you're gonna need to yeah. but okay, you can do that but it's one third on either side right mm -hmm. well so that's like a massive 38 acre lot across from our place which is still a small market right and the, all the industrial stuff not about the pub to your point, if that's yeah. really like you've got mm -hmm. our place and all the in or the river, and everybody would love coffee shop or whatever. Yeah, I definitely think there are some areas. I mean, but again, this is this is about looking at investigating. So bring it back. What exactly is the area that makes sense? Mm -hmm. What exactly do we want to do to allow for more? Uses it. It doesn't have to be. This isn't saying we're adopting this or that we need to do this. But let's discuss it. Let's investigate the opportunities, the area issues, and things like that. Mm -hmm. You really want to put a map that shows the third mile on the side of the way? I think we need to look at it. No. I wouldn't necessarily Or be more general in our language at this point. Yeah, maybe remove the third mile. Yeah. It just yeah. says investigate mm -hmm. around North Bay. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, we could, strike, we could strike the distance and just say investigate I would. more land uses around and along North Bay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Because it feels scary. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a lot of jumps in there. Yeah. You have to say, okay, it's like they get the same. Yeah, I'm like, that's all the other thing. Right there. I don't think that was the only one that was there. Yeah. 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 Well, on the, on the topic of homelessness, um, I think it's referring to homeless being the fact that you don't have enough homes, that's why people are homeless. Um, and from my interviewing people, I talked to a couple of police officers here locally um, from the Snow Palmy Police Department, and that's not the issue for them, the people that are homeless. Um, our police department is very good at being compassionate towards homeless. They have even a, I don't know what the right officer name is, but it's like, let's say compassionate officer. They have an officer who, a community officer, maybe that's what it's called. Mental health specialist. That's what it is. That's yeah. mental health. I need someone like that. It's mental health specialist. And so that person is on it and has beds for them immediately if they need help. Most people, these police officers said, do not want to go. They like living in the woods. Mm -hmm. Um, they have mental issues, mental health issues, and they have addiction issues. So it's not a, it's not because there's a lack of homes. They really choose to be out there in this situation. So while it is a problem, I think it's, it's not solved with what we're doing here. It's like a separate thing. How we need to figure out how we can maybe do better there. But and that's that permanent supportive housing. Permanent supportive housing and transitional housing and emergency housing are all required in your city to be mm -hmm. legal. So it doesn't does. have to be built, but it does need to have a path to be built in the city. Mm -hmm. Whether that they actually get built or not is up to nonprofit agencies. Mm -hmm. The market well, agencies. Like, so yeah, like, I guess what's the magnitude? Because the survey we have in here says we have the homes. I mean, you still have to at least allow it in your code to but be there's built. still an assignment for supportive housing. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I mean, that's going to just go back to, I don't know that anyone's going to be against it. I mean, not home is just to get the survey. I would, you know, it doesn't mean that well, it's the there's not the rest of it. Well, yeah, that's the so, survey. Um, obviously, I think, but yeah. like you're saying, like, it's, I, I guess it's like the magnitude of, we have, going back to the that we just don't have a lot of land, right? And we have to be very cognizant of where we're rezoning, how much we're rezoning. And like what that can be incorporated and like do we know that what and which i don't know currently what we offer today is insufficient no it's no. not i talked to the police officers and they're like no we have oh you need for homeless yeah like their right? current like to your what you said you're trying to like you have to offer it right you have to have it we don't know we haven't done an exercise okay. to determine if where we allow it and the and the buffers that we require meet the required need yet. Okay. okay. So, I yeah. Yeah. Like he was saying well, the officers just saying we need is different than what we need to plan for. Right. 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 I'm yeah. just wondering if what we have available is underutilized. Is that no, I don't think I don't think we have much available. Okay. It's just we it's just more there's one in the snow colony that they always direct people there. Yeah. Um but one of the challenges with that just just for FYI everybody here at the table is that um it was privately owned and they would only take people locally. And then recently they took a grant and now they're, re they're required to take people from out of the area. Mm -hmm. So that's causing I think, a big issue with that. And it's also, what's really cool about our police department is they get to know these people. They know them by first name, mm -hmm. they know what their issues are, and they're super kind to them and they, they have the ability to guide them in the right direction, trying to get them help that need. Mm -hmm. um, these, these people that are coming from other areas because that agency took on the grant, they don't know these people. So there's a lot more um, security issues, a lot more theft, a lot more, I guess, stress from the unknown and being able to, to, to help them. Um, and one of them even said they're being blessed here from the other area. So it's, I know, yeah. it's, it's disappointing because it's like, <laughs> we can only handle so much, you know? So anyways, we've got that issue and then the other issue, if we're going to build more apartments, and we do have this big apartment complex that's being built near um, the lumber, sure. Sure. 
in Snoqualmie, the panorama, when they built that, there's all kinds of issues there with a low, low income that lived there with theft and security, and the police department can't do enough to resolve it. And that, and what they're saying is um, a good example would be like Bothell and Kent have put in municipal code to help the police officers be able to handle it and move it, move them along and be able to make the area safer. Mm -hmm. So I think that, and I don't know if this is the place to do it, but I think it'd be nice to put in a recommendation to council that we need to start looking at some code to further support our police department so they can keep us safe. And that adheres to having a big, you know, high density apartment complex. And that goes back to my motion development argument level of service. You got to pay bills. That's true. I'm sure they'll do it, but it's impossible. But I also think, you know, certain level of commercial development and development in general, you have private ownership, you have non business operators who obviously have the security and phone lines. So you have a natural monitoring of this area. I mean, it works now. It's just a forced area. It's, right. It's a lot well, they can't even arrest someone if they have drugs on them. And so it's just apparently our laws are just not protecting us. Right. But we can't pass more restrictive laws necessarily. But Bothell and Kent have done it. So if we use them in the example, then we could have. I think there's stuff we can do. Yes. Yes. So they don't know that we can arrest something that's not arrest someone. And council yes. just do the uh, the two door whole mm -hmm. thing maneuver. I think they've a known mm -hmm. individual has pulled on yes. the door. It's not attempted further, but if they do multiple doors, now they see big action. Yeah. Yeah. So more stuff like that, but. But we need to look at that. If we increase our housing, we need to look at that same part as well. Um, I like the idea of combining the identity residential and having it affordable and mm -hmm. middle and then like extremely low, like together in one area. So River Run um, is has, I don't know how many units, eight, 18 units. Mm -hmm. Of like 20. 28 units of um like hard funded like yeah like very like government funded housing um but if you know 28 units out of 170 or something okay 20 percent mm -hmm. so I feel like if you mix it together then you don't have like the apartment complex so you're talking about the high mm -hmm. hospital it's just all mm -hmm. like low income like federal funded housing. And I think that will have better luck if we mix it and then it's just like. I don't yeah, I'd say the only thing in that from a development side, like, usually those projects that pencil are large. But you, you yeah. got to take a percentage to that offset your market rates that are facing. At the end of the day, you're, you're not going into it and going to lose, lose money okay. from where you can optimize. So you do the high requirements and then you just charge higher for like the pencils. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> other ways. Was, it goes back to like high variance then like do we like what if we change it to the 20 percent mm -hmm. the 20 percent was just based on a request for a deviation of standards they could have built it within standards they could have yeah. built it within standards and not done any affordable housing but they the only reason i that they were allowed to build there was because they were paying affordable housing mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons yeah. 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 that's part of the development yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right correct yeah, and certain cities are, you know, they negotiate like 50 years affordability or more more than 20%. So you're going to change it slower. And saying make it lower. Yeah, so that they don't have to use as much property. As much Oh, they'll yeah. still use as much property. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I'm not a huge fan of like lowering the tax. I, I feel for you though. I do. I really I want to know the impact for these people. No, no, no. Just no. no. the individual. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say this <laughs> to, be, to be fair to the city, though, like that VA agreement. Or just like Yeah. Basically, like, I don't know. 
theoretical rules. Like you can push as much as you want on the belt or sidewalks and you can try to have stop lights. You can make it so onerous that they walk away and say, I that's so just to confirm like the potential zoning changes for anything residential media, that means missing usually yeah okay so that is only going to be on right? <clears throat> okay i missed another spot for the, the cottages, they want to change the cottage zoning. Oh, yeah, and it's cottage zoning. Yeah, so they have I mean, one piece is all on there, that way, the other is a little bit off. Okay. It's the orange, just her cottage. But it's still going to be central to any weeping we decide has to come back to radio. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, it's all okay. It wasn't a city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of weird. Kind of a linear city. <laughs> kind of, we are kind of a linear city. <laughs> So A32 has some uh, incentive, some discussion on incentives to encourage uh, and reduce barriers for affordable housing projects. And then there's a general statement in B11 about general incentives and resources for general housing development, separate from affordable. Like there was an individual in the Systems Academy who made a great point when we were talking about the structure of the public works, where he lives not far from that, right? but because of kind of the layout and infrastructure, and he's got younger kids like me, he would love to ride his bike with his kid or walk with his kid to be down. But because he has to cross some streets and there's not like a quantified pedestrian area to it, they get in the car and they drive. And so I think like having the development on the North End way tied into kind of more broadly negotiated uh, DA agreement for more infrastructure, we can kind of get the density and then also like get the public access for the people who already live here and have that be like a win. Like it's not just, oh, we're going to build a building here. It's we're going to build a building, but now here in Silver Creek or whatever, like here we're going to have this is sidewalks getting built out. Like I know us at Tanner, we have this little stretch that we don't really bring kids on, so we usually park it. <laughs> well, so the, the tool already requires a lot of new improvements to allow for more pedestrians. Right. 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 No, I guess what I'm saying is just like these rezoning to induce more of the development so we yeah. get there. Right. Yeah. Okay. I see the thing just like filled with commercial and like new business spaces and you know, all of a sudden things are not seen and increase the area of on demand to your. Business on it. It's just, so it's exciting, but um, I'm just I'm curious. Like, um, so this middle first, I don't know the answer to this. Um, are those eligible for low income subsidies? I can't remember if it's like just apartments or if it's. We have to do that analysis as well. Okay. Okay. That's that was nice. That's it. We have to do an analysis of what density we need to meet the different percentages. Decide whether missing metal counts towards even zero to thirty or not. Okay. My my answer is probably yes because we saw Habitat for Humanity was able to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think with subsidy we can meet our needs with both apartments and missing metal. Okay. Um, just to, I have a ton of notes. <laughs> um, here's a couple other thoughts of adding to it of. Um, the city may be requesting help from the state to encourage the state legislature to, you know, in order to reduce rents, because we're talking about wanting to reduce rents, um, about getting together a bunch of cities and, re and requesting that the legislature start um, reducing property taxes. So they're so high, it seems like every year they're going that. Um, if we get those reduced, then we have a bunch of cities that are requesting that, you know, maybe they will back it down a little bit. So that would did definitely. Um, Positively affect rents, rents to low income. And then another um, another thing was something like on the same line is getting together with different cities and requesting that the legislature modify the condo laws to make it already all there. It's already it's already all been requested. It's already in recommendation. It's already okay. NWC is already <laughs> taking that issue on. Okay. And then. Um, as far as community message, um, I was thinking we should add in there, you know, increasing pathway from singlehood to 
to retirement or you know home ownership something along those lines um and then also to ensure community safety at the same time what was the first it's single to retirement to retirement for ownership what do you mean by that just for our just you know like having your first condo is your first Homeownership. Oh, okay. So, so first home retirement. From first home retirement. Yeah. Yeah. All the way through your life cycle. Yeah. Because then you're going to downsize to another. Um. Check. Check. And then on um the uh, strategy A one dot one, um that one is to regulate Airbnbs or short-term rentals. And I would consider it. Yeah, so I would I would say to not, I feel like that's a negative thing to do is to regulate it because you're heading down the path of regulating all rental properties. We want to encourage all people to be able to um, add an, a, an ADU or two ADUs and we don't want to limit them from being able to uh, be able to pay for it. So I guess it all comes down to what is the regulation that the city would be putting out there. Well, first is to see the number of inventory out there, and then from then on, I mean, it's going to creep up, right? And then um, it's just like how our, our country started. We didn't have tax, and we're like, oh, wait, we're just going to tax the rich. And then we're going to add this. So, you know, once you open the door, it keeps on going. I would say we don't know what the problem is yet. Let's keep the door open so everybody can do something. And as we see issues in the future, then start trying to regulate more at that point if needed. But at this point, if we don't have an issue, we don't know what it's going to be in the future, but we want to increase the number of units. And if a homeowner goes, hey, I think I'm going to I'll add an ADU, <clears throat> I'll be able to pay off that construction cost. Because I'm going to get more money for doing an Airbnb, and they're like, "Okay, I'm tired of Airbnb. Now we've got, you know, a long-term rental there." But if they couldn't pull that off because they didn't have the funds, it it would have never been. So right. keeping it flexible and open, and then later get, if you see a problem, then try to regulate then. Do you make money off Airbnb? A little bit, a little bit, a little and I think the new laws say that ADUs can't be um, long term. Long term. Can't be long term. To be, is there a limit on short term rentals for ADUs in the new legislation? No, um, I can't say anything. What? So it can't be like we're in the green. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. You'll never get rid of her. You can't. You can't charge her. You don't have that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do we? I don't think I have. I don't remember saying anything. Yeah. Okay. Someone has an Airbnb in this house. How are we? Are we keeping track of them? Sort of. It's a business license. Home occupation business basically. Okay. Probably yeah. not all of them. I'm sure, I'm I'm sure people aren't, aren't submitting, but our code requires a home occupation. Because that's the other thing is we don't want to cause problems. And I think if we do regulate it, we could look at some of the issues that are restricted through our home occupation and things we do or don't want to do. For instance, we had someone wanting to just rent their backyard for tents. Is that really something we want to allow throughout the city? Do we want to, you know, so regulating doesn't necessarily mean prohibiting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's putting boundaries. It could be noise restrictions. It could be, you know, all sorts of things. Cars, like tents. Yeah, how many cars can park. It, it's not necessarily saying you can't rent as a short term, but it regulates possibly the impacts of short-term rentals. Yeah, I think once regulations are further defined, I do actually think it makes sense. Uh, I know a lot of cities have been regulating short-term rentals um, for a variety of reasons, uh, mainly safety. Uh, but it, to your point, I think it does, um, like, 
kind of create a barrier for people that even consider doing it. Um, and then does that bring tourism down in the city? Um, how, how do we get there? Yeah, I think it's counterintuitive to not just want the city to make more money. <laughs> tourism is the way. And I think it, tracking that fight for the hotel, like I think it's going you know, to send the wrong message to our vendors who it's going to be clear, like we're not going to be able to help support it ourselves, so we're going to need developers to come and do it. Or we're not going to get anything, right? Like you're either going to have a hotel or maybe you look at more Airbnbs. Or why, why couldn't we look at that? Um, the other thing I have an issue with is there's a lot of lots here that are big, and they're like from a property rights perspective. I don't think a lot of people are going to be thrilled. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a lot of fun. Like, you it's know, a anchor. It's not that hard. <laughs> that's huge. Anchor was too. Yeah, anyway. There's, there's like. There are lots of five acre lots too. Yes, yeah, 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 it's, 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 it's the ones I'm thinking <laughs> of. There. Right, right. And yeah, and I came from a it's place like I've heard of Airbnbs, kind of to solve this, and nothing but solve for yeah. Um, we just never had housing. It was the most expensive place in the planet to live. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that we shouldn't consider it. I just don't. I think it's like just low hanging fruit that's not going to make the impact. Like, mm -hmm. if we have density issues and we need to look at housing, I think the zoning and like the downtown and stuff, like the bigger stuff we're talking about, will mm -hmm. have a much bigger yeah, and I think we're just gonna, we're not a we're a small population town too, and I think we're just gonna put some people. Yeah, so, yeah. I think at some point though, like the, the regulations you need to come into play because if we do need 860 commercial units and we end up having those other all your fees, like we'll never be able to you know, help people rent and um, access the city in the way that they want to. So yeah, it's a long term. And this is just mentioning accessory dwelling units, but people rent their entire homes too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the hubs come to Seattle. But I think that's different. You know, again, regulating could mean, okay, we don't allow full time short term rentals in, you know, a certain quantity or something like that, where, oh, yes, they're coming down, you can rent it out three months out of the year, yeah. you know, yeah. or. So I guess I'm wrong with is we're recommending to a group of seven people to regulate. Yes. Unless you're right. Sorry, you're recommending to consider inventorying and regulating. It's not proposing any actual color changes, but it's a consideration. Yeah. Those regulations yeah. need to be defined and agreed upon by groups. Correct. And then who's so the monitoring them? <laughs> yeah, we don't have a ton of ADUs right now, and yeah. I really don't think that I think it's more the homes that are the whole homes that are being rented, mm -hmm. um, or you or like a bedroom in a house. So I do know of some that are in city limits but are around here, and they rented a bedroom for 115 million. Yeah. It's even a fire business license for that. Well, so technically, we're in the city, but again, a lot of people probably are not getting those free. There and there and there's a lot of people out there doing the proper leases and probably like right. asking themselves to do all sorts of things. But you know, you're good to run. We just have some room. And some people don't get to yell at us all around. Any other major suggestions that you guys have? I yeah, I know that was just a lot of talking um, yeah. uh, across the board, but no, I do think it's a very strong. Um, so I think the only major one that was brought up is that specific action for a change. So I think we want to take a vote to keep it, remove it, or what you want to do on short, the short that a like that one, because I think everything else was clean up, clarify. And we can make a motion to just incorporate those, but I think we need to have a consensus on the short term rental one. It's basically be like the big one that. Did somebody read it again? Well, just as inventory and regulate short term. So the accessory dwelling units provide the opportunity to create additional housing for the community and a source of income for homeowners who lease them out. Short term rentals are sometimes perceived to have a negative impact 
on the availability of housing for full-time residents, as investors may purchase properties to rent them to visitors and others with short-term need. This can create a displacement pressure and is also related to issues of housing supply. Other forms of innovative or missing middle housing can also become a nuisance if they are poorly managed short-term rentals. Some jurisdictions, particularly in places with higher levels of tourism and visitation, have taken steps to regulate short-term rentals to maintain existing housing stock to meet the needs of their residents. The city could consider proactively creating a system to inventory these units and regulate them in a way that allows homeowners to generate sufficient income, provide some opportunities for short-term rentals, and provide options in the long-term rental market. While the city should not prevent homeowners from creating additional streams of income, it should be aware of ADU stocks and in the city and how they are being leased. So the question is, do we want to leave that section in or not? Or amend it or remove it. Those I are basically mean, three how options. Having an inventory of them, because we talk about it all the time, and we talk about how we don't think they're sad, but they want to be like Mm -hmm. But what what is? I feel the, we talked um about there's even talks in here about um making like streamlining it like so it's easier to get permits for an ADU and it's like we we pass things like that but maybe it's not even a, a, a necessary if we have three and we don't you know think it's going to be anything that we even need to talk about. Or maybe we have 200 and we're like, oh my God, where do they all come from? Like, what are, you know? And maybe if we don't think ADUs are the problem, it's just short term rental. Well, yeah, I think any regulation would be specific to ADU. Yeah. Well, this is kind of specific. Well, I guess it does focus on ADUs. So maybe we take that focus out because it's not a problem yet. I mean, yeah. I really don't. I think the issue. I mean, the title is inventory short term rental, so we can remove the ADU within a paragraph. Mm -hmm. if that's what I'm wrong. Uh, but, I, I, but I'm thinking short term rentals to begin with. I mean, we don't have a problem right now. Um, but so let's imagine we have 1,200 more houses to build, and we get a lot of these mixed houses that we can be like a little cottage area, uh, a fourplex, whatever the, the situation would be. A resident decides to build one of those, and then those are four new units or six new units that come into the city, but they choose to do short term rentals for all of them. So we're solving more housing. But we're not actually getting permanent housing. So that's where I think like a, an inventory of like what are the available um, but for units across the board and then some regulations. I don't know what those might be. Like if like you know, we find out like we have six hundred houses that are Airbnb. Uh, why like why why is that? What what this is the thing that story we're doing? We don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know what's gonna happen. So we have to the city or something. Yeah. But 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 you but our goal, first step. Get people to build. And if you're already making, oh, we can't do this, well, you might have half those people that might have built, who might have funded building those by doing some, maybe not all of them did, but if you're preventing them, you're preventing growth. Once they're in, then you see that we have, you can see if there's Airbnb, you just look yeah. at the website and you see, okay, looks like we've got, now we start proposing, okay, I mean, I think this, this is a, but I think that our even works. And we're saying that we want people to build specifically for short term rentals. No, not I'm not saying that. I'm, but I'm saying let, don't put any sort of restrictions. Let them build and have use how they want to. If we start seeing the use being more Airbnbs, then you start coming back. But then so that's I, it. I, know, I disagree. I'm coming from a city that was completely redevelopment. So you don't want to have to go back. Mm -hmm. Like you want to do it right to begin with. Because when you go back, it's so much harder. You have to set expectations. Like you, you can't give someone a free for all to build a ten units that they rent out and then they get to retire early. And then the city comes in and says, What what on earth are you doing? Um, like we need to put these out more permanent solutions for people that actually need But but as a whole market doesn't Offer that. Yeah. What do you mean? What if I build four and I can't get anybody for a one year lease at a rate? We have almost a zero vacancy. That, that, and that's no, that's the point we're talking about. But the zero vacancy, the zero vacancy, is, so the zero vacancy is completely related to the underwriting. It all depends on what it costs me to build. And if I can't reach that rental number, but maybe I can cash flow that at shorter increments over it, and maybe that's what it takes to get me able to earn. Yeah. As a developer, I don't want you to tell me how I'm going to get back. 
obviously, if I can get that rent from a risk perspective, I would love a one year rent, well, two year rental. But it's going to, I actually think it's going to counterintuitive make it harder to build because you're now taking away a lever that I may need to break ground and get going. Um, I think this is also a season out. This is, there's a, there's a season perspective to living in North Bend where what if I want to do? Split up my own year into two six months. What if there's That's long term rental? Short term is only under 30 days. Anything 30 days and longer is not short term. Right. So, okay. So I'm just saying, like, what if you, you want to. If you want a month to month rental, that would not be short term rental. Wait, could you do a ski lease and then rent out the rest? Okay. Could I rent my house out for 30 days in January? Yes, as long as it's 30 days or more. Or more? Yes, it can't be under 30 days. Okay, so to my point, like, what if I have a Seattle I pay a premium for my house for two weeks in January that covers a quarter of my bill? And then I have, I don't know, Bellevue College students come out, or whatever. Like, you're taking away the optionality from the developer, which is my concern. I, I also don't think council is ever in a position where they can't bring it up if somebody is saying, what's the problem in town? Why are we turning into South Lake Tahoe? Um, I just don't like it being in the document as a recommendation for the housing because I don't. I think it's completely separate. I understand your concerns, and I do think I live in a great neighborhood, and I don't. I want Juliana to be my neighbor. <laughs> she is. I don't want a bunch of short-term neighbors, but I just don't see the application of solving what we're what we're trying to do, which is why I, don't, I just don't think it's applicable, and I think it's counterintuitive to build. But at the end of the day, this document doesn't hold anybody's speech to the fighter. I mean, this is this is saying, hey, this is something we should look at. So I don't think that it's a bad thing to say, hey, maybe we should look at this. Because obviously there's passions on both sides. So it's probably something that you should look at. Well, my, my opinion is if, if, if we include that, I'm voting no to recognize it. So that's yeah. So that's, that's that's what I was kind of asking. We can put this piece of vote so that then we know where we're going with the full motion. Because if we have a majority saying they don't want this, then we can then the person making a motion to approve it can approve it with the removal. But if we have a majority saying they do want it, then we everyone knows where we're at. So or someone can just make a motion with it, and someone can make a motion without it. And you guys can vote. Yeah. You know. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you just call a vote to see if you want to remove that section? Okay. Someone make the motion? You got two. We only got half an hour. So a motion to strike A11. Sure. The second? I'm oh, sorry, we have to need for the motion? No, I was. I'll make that motion okay. to strike A11. And the second? Inventory and regular short term rentals. Just call it out. Oh. Is there any questions? Oh. Yeah, inventory and short term rentals. Is there a second? Is there a second? It's a, okay, I second it. And then a vote? Um, yeah, how many for, for that? For striking it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two. Nine. And then the rest are not striking it? Yeah, that's I did. Okay. And then um, the other thing I wanted to consider too is on the homelessness, it's all written about. The fact that we don't have enough homes, and I was hoping we could change that verbiage in there. Where is that written under which strategy? Page 14, H and A homelessness. Oh, in, in the H. In the, in the housing needs assessment? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, okay. that's, that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's it. I think that's mm -hmm. reference materials. That's right. Oh, that's yeah. reference material? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that's data. That's data based on census data. That's all it is. We, we can't argue with that. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, does anybody want to make a motion to? Whatever you keep saying, one one Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll make a motion. I'll second. <laughs> can we, so, can you remind us, before the answer is right here, can you remind us the clarification mm -hmm. points? No, no. The, um, what happens if we don't make a motion tonight, or this doesn't pass tonight. Like, what is that? You, I need a motion. If your motion is to go to council and regulate a back planning commission, then that could be that. But I have to get it. Okay. I need a motion. I, I know I'm, I'm like pushing you, and you don't have to, but I need a motion. 
if we don't have a motion to go to council, then we don't, we're going anyways. Anyways. We don't get paid, <laughs> and we're probably going anyways. <laughs> yes. So there's a there's a grant deadline. There's a grant deadline. I have to have it on a council agenda in June, and this is the last meeting to get CED and council. And so okay, so May seventh. So that I means the only option is to have another special meeting yes, next week. That's okay. like literally the only option for you guys to for further consider. But I need I need some sort of motion. The motion could be that that you don't like it. And the motion could be and then that goes to council. And then that goes to council. And then we decide to pass it or not. Correct. Absolutely. Can shoot it back to us. Or they can shoot it back to you. Okay. But, or they can edit it if they wanted to. Yeah. Or they can edit it. Or they can say, you know what? Forget the planning commission. We're gonna have the CD committee work on it further. So it's you know it's a, the council can remand it to. Either CD committee or Didn't they back to planning commission. Yes. Housing yeah, it's sort of yeah. not quite that, but yes, they punched it on the economic development because of housing. In that. But even if we say yes, we love it, they can go in and change it. Oh, absolutely. They can say, no, your recommendation is to love it as is with the proposal. That doesn't mean they have just to have to do that. Your advisory body, you're advising them. So we had a motion by the living a second and deems, is that right? Yeah. She has to say that. Oh, no. Can you get the motion? Okay. okay. I will move to recommend City Council approval of the proposed housing action plan and associated materials to fulfill Washington State Department of Commerce grant commitments, subject to corrections listed by Planning Commission in a public hearing and with. Uh, future consideration of insert in wait future specific consideration of infrastructure police impact fees zoning considerations collaboration with nonprofit and other communities to subsidize rent costs and short term rental market. That's it. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Me. <laughs> All right, so it goes forward. Sure, if you guys want to have spend time, I know this one a lot later, so we can talk the Q&A for the next meeting. Um, what did you want to leave? If we had some commissioners that had some questions on legislation, and so we were going to try to answer what we knew. Probably have to do more. So well, you guys are also also welcome to set up a meeting kind of even be individually to discuss legislation and not have to do it during a commission meeting. But we were asked to Is it something that can wait for another meeting? Absolutely. Yeah. In my opinion, yes. It's not, it's not it. I love the idea of having it in the meeting though. Yeah. For yeah. someone that was thinking about doing a one on one, I'd love to just listen to yeah. different points to think about. And if you have questions on specific legislation, you let us know ahead of time. We can prepare something for the meeting. I want to leave it a little open for any questions. Hold on, hold on. Robert, that's right. At this point, we'll conclude the meeting. Um, and thanks everybody for being involved. We're uh, closing out at 8.04 p.m.